Hi guys. This is the Igorotech. Today, I will show you how to configure inter VLAN routing on FortiGate Firewall. Inter VLAN routing is the ability to route or send traffic between VLANs that are normally blocked by default. Let's begin. For this demo, we are using the latest 40 OS release which is version 7.4. Now, if we go to Network, Interfaces, you can see the different VLANs which we configured on the previous video. The default admin or internal. Guest which has the VLAN ID of 200 and the server network which has the VLAN ID of 100. First is we are going to allow this admin or internal network to access the server network. On the other hand, we are also going to allow the server network to access the admin network. We can also allow the admin to access the guest network. Let's first open a command prompt and check my network configuration. Notice that I have the IP address of 10.255.255.100.254 is the gateway which you can see it's under the admin or internal network. By default, we cannot ping the other networks or VLANs. We can give it a test. We will ping the server network gateway which is 10.10.100.254. It's unreachable. If we go to the device monitoring window, under asset, we can see my computer's IP address. We can also see that there's a device connected to the server network which has the IP address of 10.10.100.100. We can open the command prompt and test to ping that IP. It would be unreachable. We can test to ping from the firewall. We are able to ping the device from 40 gate. Means the device is up and running. Now, if you're familiar with Cisco configuration, you can just enter the command IP routing to enable inter VLAN communication. But for 40 gate, it's a different process. Go to policy and objects. Firewall policy. This window pop up because I just upgraded my firmware to version 7.4. In the previous video, we configured these policies to allow different VLANs to access the internet. I removed the security profiles for the sake of this video. Now, click on the plus sign to create a new policy. For the name, since we are going to create a policy for the admin to access the server network then we will give a name of admin to server for our reference. Incoming interface or source interface would be the admin, this is where my computer is currently connected. Outgoing interface or the destination interface would be the server which we want to access. For the source address, we can choose all or we can specify using the admin or internal network address. You can verify by pointing your cursor unto it. You can see all the details. This address was automatically created when we configured the admin or internal interface. For security purposes, you can only specify the devices or users that you want to access the server network. It's not necessary to allow the whole subnet to access another subnet. You can create an address or address group which I also showed you in the previous video then choose that address which you only want to allow. For this demo, we are going to allow the whole subnet so we will choose the admin or internal network address. For the destination, we can also choose all or we can specify using the server's address. Again, for security purposes, you can specify the devices or users that you want the admin network to access. You can create address or address group then choose that address or address group for the destination. You can also do this option if you want admin or internal users to access only this specific server. But our goal for today is only inter VLAN routing so we can simply choose the network address. We are going to allow all the admin or internal users to access the server network. Schedule to always. If you want to set the date and time duration, you can check my other video for the scheduling configuration guide. For the services. You can only specify the required services or you want to allow. Just simply search and select from the entries. For this demo, we will just choose all. Action should be accept since we are going to allow the traffic. NAT should be disabled since this is for local traffic, it's not going out of the internet. For the security profiles. You can enable the options based on your preference. For the log allowed traffic, 
you can choose all sessions for better monitoring and troubleshooting purposes. Comments is optional. Make sure enable this policy is enabled then click OK to apply the changes. You can see the newly created policy which is admin interface to server interface. Name is admin to server. Source is the internal or admin subnet address. The destination is the server subnet address. No scheduling and allowing any services. NAT is disabled and you can see the security profiles enabled. Since we already have the policy then we should be able to ping the server's IP address. Let's open back the command prompt. First is we will ping the gateway IP address which is 10.10.100.254. Earlier, it was unreachable. But it should be reachable by now since we already have the policy allowing traffic. Now, if we go back to the device inventory, we can see the server which is online. We can open back the command prompt and test to ping the server's IP address again. It was also unreachable earlier and we should be able to ping it by now. Success. The admin or internal network can now ping or access the server network. Now, let's go back to the firewall policy. Notice the bytes or hit count is zero. Let's refresh the page. You can see that there's already a hit count. It's because we ping the server from this PC and it used this policy. So now that the admin can access the server, some of you might be wondering if the server network can also access the admin network. Well, the answer is no. Server network cannot access the admin network because we only allowed one-way traffic. If you want the server network to also access the admin network then you need to create a reverse policy of what we just created. To do this, right-click on the newly created policy then choose Create Reverse Policy. You can see the newly created reverse policy but there's an X sign. This means the policy is disabled. To enable the policy, right-click on it. Hover your cursor to set status then choose Enable. The reverse policy is now active. We have now the policy to allow admin network to access server network and also a policy allowing server network to access admin network. Let's go back to the interfaces. We can also allow the admin network to access the guest network. This would be very quick, we can simply clone and modify any of the current policies. Right click on any of the policies. Choose copy. Right click on it again. Hover your cursor to paste then choose above or below. Now, double click on the cloned policy to edit. We will only change the outgoing interface and destination address. For the outgoing interface, we will change to the guest interface. For the destination, we can change it to all or change it to the guest's address. The rest would be the same. Modify the comments. Make sure to enable the policy then click OK to apply the changes. Admin network can now access the guest network. You can also create a reverse policy for the guest network to access the admin network. Some of you might be also wondering, what if I want a VLAN network to access a physical network like this DMZ? It would be the same process. We can clone some of the current policies again. Right click on any of the policies again. Choose copy. Right click again then hover your cursor to paste then choose above or below. Double click on the clone policy to edit. Change the outgoing interface to the DMZ interface. For the source, we are not going to allow the whole admin or internal subnet. We will only allow my computer for this policy. For the destination, we can choose all or the DMZ subnet. Alternatively, you can create address, address group or address range and set as destination. For this policy, we will choose DMZ subnet. The rest would be the same. Delete or modify the comments. Make sure to enable the policy then click OK to apply the changes. You can see the newly created policy. We have allowed admin to access the DMZ network. Same process, simply create a reverse policy if you want the DMZ network to access the admin network. Well, I hope by now you know how to configure inter VLAN routing on FortiGate Firewall. That's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, Please don't forget to like, share, 
subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.